So what recently really caught my interest were 3D printed shoes. And I've seen a couple of them online but really didn't get the feeling of how well do they perform or if they can replace normal shoes. So I decided to make my own completely from scratch. So from the design to 3D printing and here they are. I asked myself all these questions, so how well do they perform on different terrain, are they affordable, can an average guy make them, and I decided to make this video to answer all these questions together. So let's do it. So first I came up with the design of the shoes and made a model in Fusion 360 and Tinkercad. I wanted something really simple but really robust and something that would resemble a boot. I also took some inspiration from Crocs and added a bunch of holes on the side of the shoe and on the toe box. This allowed for the shoes to be more lightweight, airy and also to reduce the plastic needed to make them. I designed the sole of the shoe to have a really nice grip and also bend the whole thing so that each step carries you into the next one. Now the first problem I had to deal with was the size. My foot length is 26.7 cm or 10.5 inches, but my building plate of the 3D printer is only 21 by 21 cm, so I had to tilt the shoe and place it diagonally. For the filament I chose the standard TPU because it's known to be stretchy and durable, but it's also a little bit hard to print, so I had to tweak a few parameters to get it done. When I finally first sliced the model in Cura, I was shocked. 3 days and 20 hours to get it done and 605 grams of plastic to be used. It immediately became even more challenging, but I just went for it. So for my first try, the printing setup was pretty basic. An FDM 3D printer and a TPU filament, that's it. So after 14 hours of printing, I came to this. This is actually the cause of the problem. Here the TPU filament is really thin and what happened actually was that the print head was at a certain height along the z-axis and the extruder pulled on the TPU too much and we all know when the TPU is stretched it's not good and therefore I had to stop the printing. So I came up with a solution and this is actually a second extruder and this will help for much smoother transition of the filament uh, between the extruders so the first one, this one, will actually fit it to the second one or original one and as you can see it's uh, 3D printed. It has two wheels, one is attached to a motor and one on the top is connected to a lever and this lever is uh, regulated by the spring and the spring actually presses the top wheel onto the bottom one and the filament goes between these two wheels. Once the motor is activated the filament is fed through and this will be actually attached above the filament detector and will help to yeah, guide the filament and prevent uh, the stretching of the filament. Okay, so this is my final setup. I have webcam here which will record the time lapse and it's connected to the computer. And then I have microcontroller here activated with the secondary extruder right there. I have a new spool of TPU filament, brand new. So everything is ready, everything is set up. Fingers crossed that everything will go okay. Okay, I have to admit that even after I added the secondary extruder, I was under adrenaline the whole time and had to check every few hours what's going on, if everything's okay, and I was really, really impressed how my FDM printer performed because I didn't know that it was capable of such a task until I came back 3 days and 20 hours later to find this. I mean, it's just astonishing. The 0.2mm resolution was the right choice and the TPU filament stuck really well and even though that the support under the toe box of the shoe wasn't perfect, it did its job. Because I invested so much effort into these shoes, I just left it there for a few minutes and took some shots from different angles wow. and enjoyed the view. Overall, I'm really pleased how it came out. It looks really nice, it looks really solid. Now let's just remove everything that's unnecessary and we'll see what we're left with. The trimming took a few hours because I had to use clippers and I just couldn't burn away everything, but now all that was left was to print another shoe, <laughs> but I'll skip that part. Instead, let's talk about the price. So each shoe weighs around 400 grams and each spool of TPU filament weighing 700 grams costs 27 euros. Now, if you also account for the electricity, the total cost to make one shoe is around 18 euros. So here they are, here are the final shoes. I'm really pleased how they actually came out. They look super clean, but also really robust. 
And yeah, uh, now my plan is to test them for 100 kilometers, to wear them indoors and outdoors on different terrains. And I can't wait to see the results and how they perform. The first idea was to test the shoes indoors on a flat surface to see how comfortable they are, if you can wear them for a longer period of time, if you can do stationary chores in them, and just to get a feeling for the new material. I thought a lot about custom shoelaces but then decided to use the TPU because it's strong enough and it goes well with the shoes. At first I was the most worried about the sole of the shoes because I used cubic infill, a pattern that leaves you with a lot of empty space and I just couldn't imagine that these shoes could hold my weight. But as you can see they did an amazing job by retaining their original shape even after going up and down the stairs. Because the ultimate goal was to test how well do these 3D printed shoes perform and if they can endure 100 km challenge, I started to count the kilometers from the first day that I put them on. First I did 9 km indoors but then I had to find new challenges and new terrains so I took them outside. I first started with a long walk along the grass pasture but then I quickly became bored and really wanted to test the flexibility of the TPU and the shoes themselves so I went for a run on the first day. The shoes are really comfortable from first hand experience but the edges are a bit sharp so maybe if I soften the edges it would be even better but so far they're quite quite nice. After a few running sessions it became even more evident that the edges of the collar are indeed too sharp. So I used an old hair straightener and heated up the plates and pressed them onto the edges to make them more dull. And this really seemed to have worked because I was able to collect 50 kilometers by combining straight tracks and running sessions. But it turned out that this was only the beginning. I had to test what happens if I'm going uphill. What happens if the incline is more than 10%, what forces come into play and if I can even keep my shoes on. To test this I set out and climbed various hills and mountains ranging from 900 to 1600 meters above the sea level. One time I even wore the shoes while driving to the starting point. The shoes had to face gravel, rocks, grass at different inclines and the shoes did a great job of keeping me safe and sturdy. I'm also really impressed that even though this was my own design and first 3D printed shoes that I ever made, that they stayed on the whole time. Unfortunately there were also moments that I couldn't capture and those were actually the impressions and comments from the other people that were passing by and they seemed to be really curious about the shoes but I just didn't have my camera with me. At around 70 km mark the right shoe seemed to have reached its limit. I first noticed one of the tears on the side of the shoe which got bigger and bigger until it reached one of the side holes. But I assumed that this could easily be avoided if the shoes weren't printed with an FDM printer and if I reduced the number of side holes around fragile places. However, although the right shoe got damaged, it was still functional and the left one was pretty much intact, so there was no way of stopping but continuing until both of them gave out. Now I know that this might be obvious, but I haven't seen anyone talking about it, so I would still like to point out that 3D printed shoes are actually really easy to clean. From this aspect they have a huge advantage compared to normal shoes made out of fabric. After each session I cleaned mine with water, soap and brush and they were as good as new. Ok now back to functionality. Even though I softened the edges on the collar of the shoes, after 45 minutes of wearing them uphill they started to hurt. It's starting to hurt really bad. Here I was already at 90 km milestone but because I really wanted a solid finish of testing these shoes I went hiking on top of a mountain with an altitude difference of 1000 meters and a duration of route of 2 hours and 30 minutes. Ok so we are roughly at 1600 meters and these shoes did their job, they are still good. We'll see at what price did we get here because my ankles hurt really bad so yeah. After reaching the top I had to switch from my 3D printed shoes to my standard hiking shoes because the pain was just unbearable and the grip was wearing out. Even though I had no visible blisters this was the price I had to pay. After completing the challenge I took the shoes to my friend's house to see their reaction. 
But because they already knew about the shoes, I only got a couple of sarcastic reactions. I think that they expected that the shoes will be much more smooth, much more comfortable, maybe padded or something like that. Either way, we had a really nice time filming this. You were jumped in them and also proved that you can actually moonwalk in these shoes. While Meta claimed that they are above Yeezys. Oh my god! Z has nothing on these. And she also made some other exaggerated statements that I had to censor. To sum up, making your own 3D printed shoes is completely doable and even affordable. I think that the hardest part is actually the design. And in my case, if I wanted to refine them, I would first lower the color of the shoes. I would make my own custom shoelaces and reduce the number of side holes. I would also pad the insides of the shoe and that would probably make them perfect. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next project.